Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. I came to Morocco looking to go to the Sahara. I want to eat roasted goat or camel grilled over an open fire. I want to eat sheep's eyeballs. And I want to, when I look out, I want to see an absolutely unbroken vista of nothingness. To the Western mind, Morocco can be a surreal looking place. Tilt your head and you'll see desert, and in the background, snow-capped mountains. You'll see a community built largely of mud and straw, and yet there'll be an internet cafe. So to use the old saw, it is a country of contrasts. We just left Fez, which is a rabbit warren of activity. Fez is, of course, the longtime center of Moroccan cuisine. When you think of Moroccan cuisine, you think couscous. No question about it. This is wonderful. Kebabs of lamb or beef, known here by the French name brochette, are pretty common. Each meal starts with a variety of small salads that range from pickled and spiced vegetables to lamb liver to olives. Rice and corn salad here, or beet salad. Lovely. Fez is most famous for its tagine, another signature dish of Moroccan cooking. Tajin is a stew of chicken, beef, lamb, or vegetables, subtly spiced and cooked in a conical clay dish known as, you guessed it, a tajin. Moroccans eat almost all their meals at home, and I was lucky enough to get invited to some of these. So I've had the best Fez has to offer. I'm already deliriously happy. <laughs> it's just smelling good. But now I'm headed to the desert to have a whole new experience. So as I understand it, we're crossing the mountains. We're gonna eat some road food, and then I'm looking for nomadic desert-dwelling food. They do, as I understand it, and dig a hole in the sand and chuck in a lot of hot coals, roll a big animal in there, and let it roast away. It's supposed to be fantastic. So I'm looking to stand in one place and turn 360 degrees and see nothing but sand. And I'm looking to be about as far away from everything I know as I've ever been. Abdul is my guide, my driver, my mentor. He knows his country, loves his country. He's very proud of the cuisine. He's a bit of an operator, but he's a guy who loves food and knows where to get it. What's good? Yeah, bur bur tajin, or uh, couscous. Tajin, couscous, or, couscous, uh, tajin. Get that just about everywhere. Salad, different things. Brochette. Well, maybe some brochette. Or I have, I think they have also rabbit. Rabbit. International House of Pancakes. There's hotels like this all over. We drive across hundreds of miles of barren desert or high atop a mountain. When you finally reach the place, there's a tour bus filled with tourists. Here we are all the way up in the mountains, surrounded by uh, rather spectacular views. You know, it's like a princess cruise line in the middle of nowhere. Is that B. Arthur over there? This is a Muslim country. And I'm pleased to see that uh, we are in a tiny island of godlessness, meaning beer. I see we have uh, trout here. It's supposed to be good. I see a lot of freshwater streams. The people are always telling me eat more salad, and I'm always saying bad things about vegetarians, so it's a good thing. OK, what do we got here? Two trout who are undoubtedly leaping happily out of the water only a few hundred yards from this location. And we have, apparently, the local translation of the word veal is open to interpretation, because that looks like beef to me. But it uh, looks good. Actually, I'll tell you if it's veal or beef in a second. Good, maybe youngish beef. The trout is grilled and simply served with saffron rice, roasted potatoes, and stewed carrots. Yeah, very nice. Lovely. Let's eat. Good. Fresh. You know, I'm usually not a freshwater fish fan, but it's local, it's fresh. This is really good. It's good, all right, but this is no desert barbecue. This is like on the way to the desert. We're not even there yet. 
We're not even close. The roadside snack. There's a lot of sugar in that tea right here. I'll tell you where we were, but I don't know. Long road, man. Long road to the desert. Finally, we reach the end of the road, the frontier town of Rissani, the last stop before the dunes. We'll sleep here before our final push to the Sahara. I don't want to eat in the hotel. I just don't want to do it. I've come all this way. I don't want to be sitting around in a room full of tourists tucking into tourist food. OK, let's see if we can find anything edible here. I'd rather not eat in my hotel tonight. So, daredevil that I am, I say, we'll go to the market. Now, warning sign. I tell Abdul that I want to do this, and he rolls his eyes up to the heavens, not very encouragingly. Nothing but raw meat here. Not looking too promising. No food, huh? Yeah, no soup, no kebabs. I should have listened. Didn't smell too good in there either, huh? Smelled like something freaking died. My search for authentic Moroccan food is not going well. One local specialty. Uh, two. No, that's not bad. What was it I just ate, by the way? We'll see how I feel tomorrow. We'll probably have a better idea. Was the line from the odd couple? Uh, they find something in Oscar's refrigerator that was either uh, very old meat or very young cheese. Here's where I sleep back into my hotel with my tail between my legs. Oh, Heineken. Life is good. What we got here is chicken tagine, and apparently tagine covers a whole multitude of sins. I mean, this is very, uh, this is very different than what we've seen. But yes, different. Chicken with raisins and uh, onion. Onion. Tahutena. And it smells very tastes, different. It tastes a little bit sweet. It looks like it was actually cooked in this tagine, judging from the sizzling. No, no, no. Anything that's cooked slow in a really, really heavy object like uh, like clay, and anytime you cook in clay, it's going to be better. Just like anytime you grill over wood. It's almost always going to be better. So a new take on an old favorite. Tajin offers many possibilities, but that's not what I came here for. I want my whole roasted lamb. Just the, tomorrow, the dunes. Going out on a big sand dune. Contemplate the mysteries of the great vastness. And tear into hunks of sizzling meat. OK, cheers, bigger. Good. Right. Bismillah. 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 Moroccan way. Moroccan way. You can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Just before setting out for my desert meal in the Sahara, I'm having a little conversation with Abdul, and I say, so, we're going to be eating that meshwa, right? That cool whole roasted lamb? He says, oh, no, 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 no. You'll be eating something else. Couscous. OK, I don't want couscous. I had couscous in Fez. I want a lamb. I want the whole roasted thing like I read about in some book somewhere. I want to do the Lawrence of Arabia thing. Hey, I was here last night. It smells better today. I take that back. So I insist he take me back to the market so we can find a sheep. Yes. That we need one. If we're going to have one cooked for us, we have to buy ourselves. Maybe this is unreasonable of me, but I did not come all the way to the Moroccan desert so I could sit there eating couscous like the other roofs. Right. But, but in any case, we, we need to bring our own meat, right? Yes. OK, so we need to buy a, we need the whole wazoo. I want a lamb. I want a whole lamb. I must have this, Abdul. Please, hook me up, I say. So we go visit the local neighborhood butcher in Rissani. I like how he cuts that meat. I like the cutting board. Look at that. Just a tree stump. The ship must be a little bit dry. No lamb. They could sell you a leg of lamb. Lamb shoulder. The constant refrain in my life. If you come Monday, you could have gotten that whole lamb. Listen, I'm not throwing chunks of lamb into an oven. I want a whole lamb, cooked in a clay oven like I saw in the movie. And I want the testicles. I say, do what you have to do. I want a whole lamb. Further negotiations, incomprehensible to me, ensue. They have a lot of ships. Yes, Looks like it's all arranged. Oh, where are we going, by the way? We go by ship. Oh, good. good. <laughs> As we walk down these shabby, dark, dusty, narrow streets, deeper and deeper into the backwater of Rissani, I'm beginning to get this feeling that I'm part of some sinister and vaguely criminal conspiracy. 
and I'm beginning to get the idea when we're joined by a guy who seems to be carrying some menacing looking cutlery that my desire for a whole lamb dinner on the dunes is going to mean bad news for another living creature. What are we discussing? We're talking about the price. Sounds good to me. Yeah, see, this is the uh, this is the bench team waiting to get in on the action up there. He's very good at this. Fast. There are very prescribed means of killing an animal in the Islamic faith. It is slaughtered and prepared as instructed by the Quran. Halal preparation of meat. One points the animal towards Mecca, immediately cuts its throat, dresses it, constantly washing. What do they usually cook up? Just meat and uh, balls. <laughs> balls. This guy will happily tell you eating testicles is not unusual. They eat calves' testicles in the U.S., only they call them Rocky Mountain oysters. I've personally never had them, so I've got to try them. That intestinal lining there, perfect for merguez, spicy Moroccan lamb sausage. You just clean that up and pump in your nice lamb and spice mix, tie it off in a links. You got something really good. I saw this on cable in France, actually. Pay-per-view. Good, yes, save the crepine. I like to wrap, to wrap the brochettes. Well, oh, that's really good. I like that. I would do the same thing myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's for classic French. Into the bag. When Tony gets hungry, things die. All right. From this point on, no more minivan. Got to rent a Land Rover. You're going out in the desert, you're hitting sand. You're hitting a little rougher terrain. You need four-wheel drive. Plus, they look so cool. It's like driving on a big brick of Philadelphia cream cheese. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm doing, I'd rather be in the pool at the Sheraton, having a tall boat drink, watching a soccer game. With the beautiful girls. Well, I forgot, yeah, with beautiful <laughs> girls and bikinis. Not me. I'm looking forward to eating my whole roasted lamb under the stars. This is one of those motifs of the imagination. You know, I thought I'd never see. Woohoo! You know, you see it on the side of cigarette packs, and you see it in the movies, and you see it in postcards maybe now and then, but you don't ever think you're going to see it in person. Suddenly, you see in the distance a big pile of sand, the Sahara. In the afternoon sun, the sand looks red. I realize I'm at the end of the world, and I've never seen any place like this. I may never see any place like this again. I came a long way to eat my whole roasted lamb, drove for hundreds of miles in a van, switched to a four-wheel drive Land Rover to drive out across the desert, and when I hit the dunes, I had to switch vehicles again. Okay, two, two hands. All right. Good. Kind of like riding a horse, only humpier. Hey, just be grateful you're not dinner. Meet the blue dudes, who are Berbers. These are the folks who are leading me out on camelback to show me how they make Berber bread and whole roasted lamb. There are many, many Berber tribes. They say that about 10,000 years ago, the Berbers came from Yemen. And in a sense, the Berbers are the original Moroccans. A couple of hours into the dunes, we stopped for lunch. I was eager to see bread baked the Berber way, baked directly in the sand. The Berbers make a fire that heats the sand to bake the dough. This is something pretty special. This is not just bread, it's a meat pie. So what's you putting in there? Ground beef, peppers, onions, tomatoes, and hard cooked egg. And Martha Stewart could do this. And they bury the bread directly in the sand. This doesn't sound like it would work, does it? Won't sand get stuck in the dough? I guess we'll see. Around how long does it take to cook? Half hour it's been cooking. So maybe we should go look at the sunset. Ooh. You know, those desert pictures weren't too far off. I see nothing but sand. 360 degrees. 
This is a pretty major score. It has been a long, strange trip. I mean, if a utility chef like me ends up sitting in the middle of the Sahara Desert, eating my way around the world, what does it all mean? I mean, who would have guessed? I've done every damn thing wrong my whole life. I must have done something right to end up with this. How did this happen? It's really beautiful. One gets the impression, even while it's happening, that this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. In the desert. I hear something. That's the sound of sand being scraped off my lunch. Now, that doesn't sound like a good thing, but it is. It's going down. Yeah. If you're sitting out in the middle of nowhere with some cool blue Berber dudes cooking you bread, yes. and you know you're doing something pretty extraordinary. It tastes great. Not a single grain of sand ended up in my food. So you don't need pots and pans, none of that fancy nonstick stuff. No oven, just dig a hole in the ground. Need a bowl, a little water, that's it. That's all. I was gonna say I wish you could taste this, but I wanna be the only person I know <laughs> who have eaten this. Too good to share. Great. After lunch, we continue on to the Berber camp. I did not expect what would be waiting for me. Full bar, half-style pillows, carpet. Cheers. 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 This is better than I pictured it does in Oasis. Time to put the meat on. What we got going? Put this one. Putting the nuts back in there. Give it a good rub down with water, onion, mount them on a stick, wire him tight so he doesn't fall down, and jab him into a mud oven. Oh, yeah. So this is a packed mud oven. You're going to put out almost all of the coals. The lamb's going to go in, and just the residual heat in that oven, and a few of the coals are going to be enough to roast that sucker up. Oh, and the flavor is going to be amazing. I'm really having a good time. You done good, Abdul. Seal that bad boy up. They've been doing this for centuries. I used to use the word old school. This is old school. I was going to put the, the, the ship. OK, good. Look forward to this. He's pleased. Huh? All right. It must be not very hot. Right. Medium, otherwise. Uh... It'll, it'll burn. It'll get too dark. See ya. That's beautiful. Yeah. OK, then we put the top on. I'm really loving this. How long does he think it's going to cook? Two hours. That's fantastic. Great, a little late supper, perfect. If there is some even very small hole, it's no good. It's not good. Right. So checking check. for leaks. Yeah. Oh, admit it, this is the greatest thing ever. All right. I'll be at the bar. You're sitting around with sand in between your toes in the middle of the northern Sahara with the smell of roasting lamb in the distance. It feels pretty damn good. I'm happy. A beautiful soup here. Harira soup. It's vegetables, lamb, chickpeas, and rice. Okay, Moroccan one? Yes. Bis Bismillah. 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 Always. Well, it's good. You it's know, good. I've had this it's dish three times. It tastes different every time. Yeah. This lamb is more predominant. My lamb is ready. No. <laughs> no. How do they know it's done? Timing. Done this before, I gather. It's like telepathy. Yeah, I'm sending messages. I'm ready. Drum roll, please. That is looking really good. That sucker's done. Magnificent. The idea of eating whole lamb meshwa, Berber style, or Moroccan style in general, you're eating with your hands. You're not traveling with cutlery. That's a Flintstone-sized portion. Seeing if you're able to pull off shreds of fat and skin, meat, pop it right into your mouth. Oh, yeah. I know what that is. The testicles. Testicles, you say? Sheep testicles. Tony, that's disgusting. That's horrible. Bismillah. Bismillah. I believe these call these uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Mmm. Tasty. Very tender. You know what? Those are really good. In fact, with a flavor much like sweetbreads. Or minced. Imagine veal. 
only fluffier and more tender. Make you strong, like both. It's, Aphrodis it's aphrodisiac. Yeah, think about that. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, listen, I just knocked off a whole nut myself. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Couldn't be better. Fresh, crispy, delightful. Please thank the chef. This is wonderful. Thank him for an extraordinary yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. Thank him for all the extra work and uh, everything. You don't know what you're missing. This rocks. I came a long way from my whole roasted lamb. If next week I'm hit by a truck, one of the things that will give me some comfort is I saw the sun set over the Sahara, and I ate my whole roasted lamb. It's just perfect. It's just like the movies. Life finally lives up to its advertising. <laughs>